Hello and welcome to lesson 68 of the Learning Guitar series. Uh, first of all, I'd like to apologize to the Patreon for the one week delay in publishing this lesson, but unfortunately I contracted COVID for the third time and uh, so I was uh, kind of bedridden for a bit. In fact, like I'm still, I still have some cough and my voice is still not completely back, but you know, uh, it's enough to, to be able to do this, uh, this video. Uh, and of course, I'd like to thank the Patreon for supporting this project. And, um, you know, as usual, it's not many of you, but uh, are making this thing impossible. Um, this lesson is not going to be a particularly long one, as um, we're concluding our discussions on melodic manners arpeggios. And uh, as you see from the published PDF that comes with the lesson, uh, we're looking at it uh, via the cycle of fourths so that we can kind of recap all that we know about it and making sure that we add now these extra words to our vocabulary. Um, at the same time, there's a couple of interesting things we can discuss uh, in terms of our harmony and theory and applied to the, to the melodic manner, which I think you're gonna find it, uh, you're gonna find very interesting. Um, if you have a look at the backing track that, uh, that I uploaded both to YouTube and of course to Patreon, and on Patreon there is the PDF with the, literally with the description of what the core progression is, uh, I'll show it to you. So here is the backing track, uh, the chart for the backing track. And of course, the cycle of fourths. We're going from G minor to C minor, uh, C minor major seven, obviously, because it's melodic minor, F minor major seven, etc. And you can see these chords in parentheses. And I wrote C lesson 68 for the meaning of those chords or pages in parentheses. Um, one very interesting thing about the melodic minor, among other things, obviously, is how we can use other arpeggios within it in order to uh, well to achieve uh, to achieve uh, interesting uh, interesting uh, interesting sounds the concept is fairly easy it's fairly logical uh, let me show it to you so here i have a, a neck of a guitar i'm going to write down a melodic minor uh, I, i'm going to use the key of g as usual so like you know this is the root note right here second flat three or actually, rather than the scale, I'm going to write the arpeggio. Let's do that. I'm going to write the modal arpeggio. That was going to make even more sense if I do that. So it's one flat three, five, major seven, nine. So let's change this to a nine. Then we have uh, 11. Oops. Sorry, that's the wrong note. Here you go. 11 and 13. And then we're back to our root note. First of all, let's have a look. I'll highlight it in white so you'll see it. This particular chord, or arpeggio, obviously. This is actually D7 because I'm in G. Let me move the. I'll change the root note for a second so you can clearly see. Being this the D note, this is literally 1, 3, 5, flat 7, which means that D7 as an arpeggio and as a chord is contained into our melodic minor arpeggio, where basically if we play D7 while the G minor chord is going on, what I'm basically highlighting is 5th, 7, 9, and 11. In other words, I'm working already more with the, with the upper structure. And in fact, when you look here, so for example, with G minor major seven, that's why I wrote D seven. And what I mean by that is, you can use the arpeggio of D seven literally over G minor major seven, and by doing so, you are actually starting to play the upper structure instead of you know starting from the root note and having the third and all that. At the same time, also very interesting is if I start from the seventh, and I play this arpeggio or this chord. So literally, I'm, I'm literally playing only the upper structure of the melodic minor modal arpeggio. 7, 9, 11, and 13, and these four notes, let me change the root note and see if you can recognize what it is. 1, flat 3, flat 5, flat 7, that's half diminished. So if I play in the case of G, let me bring this as a root note. If, I'm, if the chord is G melodic minor, so G minor major 7, that's what I mean by that. And I just want to play the upper structure of that modal arpeggio, so 7, 9, 11, and 13. I can just go for, starting from the major 7, play half diminished. 
at the after the minutes arpeggios and we've done this when we've done Locrian uh, the same way when we've done dominant seven arpeggios when we've done uh, mixolydian so all those studies they come useful now in terms of okay i can just play the upper structure if i want and so if i want to create uh, some sort of a uh, general rule about it you know let's say i have a um, let's again let's use the g minor major seven that's the chord I'm working with. Actually, I'll freeze it, you know, so that like, we can play on top of it. Of course, this would be the the modular arpeggio. And we studied that uh, in the previous lesson. And of course, I can have, you know, like that's minor major seven. And of course, I can. And here is my D7. The second arpeggio here, and we looked at it when we did uh, the, um, the harmony in theory behind melodic manner. But if I look at it from the root note point of view, well, this is uh, an aumented triad with a major seven which is not the kind of arpeggio we have studied yet. But if I continue, well, this is D7. And you can hear it, it generates interesting sound because obviously we are playing more of the upper structure of the minor major seven, a full arpeggio, modal arpeggio, as opposed to, you know, root note, flat three, five, and flat, and major seven, which is, you know, nothing wrong with that, but. Can you hear the difference? And so now I can use basically D7, and of course we know five shapes for it, obviously, because we've done it when we've done the Solidian, right? Etc. 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 So that's the first interesting thing, and that goes if I have to kind of have some general rule in my head. Given a melodic, given a, a minor major seven chord, I can go to the fifth of that chord. So in the case of G, it would be the fifth is D. Uh, if this was uh, E uh, minor major seven, then you know the fifth would be B. So B dominant. That would be the arpeggio I would run. We're talking arpeggios here, right? Eh? Uh, not scales, and of course this is a triad. So D D triad also would work, literally the simple one, as opposed to D seven. Just or with a dominant seven attached. Does it make sense? And, uh, you know, and another example of this is the alpha diminished and the alpha diminished is even easier to remember because what we're doing is uh, you can literally think it from a semitone down because obviously it's the major seven we're looking at so this is the arpeggio the alpha diminished arpeggio which is this seven nine eleven and thirteen um but you can think of it as being starting here so that's the major seven nine eleven and thirteen and here you have your alpha diminished Type of arpeggio, and in the case, the kind of sound you get out of it. Let's uh, let's 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 freeze it again. So in this case, we are semitone down. So in the case of G, a semitone down would be F sharp, and we have F sharp off diminished. Obviously, this is going to sound even more farther away because we're only playing the upper structure of the chord. So instead of sounding like this, we're sounding like this. And of course, combined with the minor major seven, what becomes interesting now is that within two frets, I have the entire modal arpeggio. But instead of spelling it vertically, I'm spelling it horizontally 
what I mean by that is that vertically, again, it would be 1, flat 3, 5, flat 7, 9, 11, 13. But I'm taking this part here and play it here. And now I have this kind of, I can construct phrases based on. Does it make sense? I do hope it makes sense. I find this kind of stuff very interesting and uh, in the future we'll do um, even more of this consideration in terms of what kind of arpeggios are contained into other things. It's not really core substitutions in this case. It's just accessing the, uh, the upper voices of a modal arpeggio. Because sometimes, you know, you're playing a tune and uh, maybe you have one bar of G minor before we move into something else. And you might not have the time to spell the entire thing. And you, you literally might want to go just for the upper structure directly. In that case, you know, the cage system comes handy in this sense. Because as you can see, we can reduce pretty much everything into minor 7, uh, dominant 7, half diminished and of course in some cases major sevens. So all the arpeggio studies that hopefully you've done when we've done the major modes, you see how they can come handy again. Uh, the different case is gonna be like the augmented with the major seven, but when we get to them mode, which is the third mode of melodic manner, well, we'll discuss that too, and you know, we'll have five shapes for that too, you know. But at the moment, this can literally, you know, can be very interesting. And let's say, for example, I'm gonna, you know, loop something. This is like just a normal, you know, uh, minor major seven to octaves. if we start combining it with a scale. Now let's let's use uh, just the dominant seven version of it. So G means D7. So for example D7 you should be very familiar with this D7 arpeggio. Uh, this is shape of E basically. And maybe alternate it with with the, the basic um, one flat three five major seven. D triad, dominant seven, the scale, and so like uh, as you can see, harmony in theory sometimes kind of gives us the opportunity to enrich uh, the possibilities of what we can do. Um, one last thing that needs to be said about melodic matter in terms of the first degree is that because the five chord is contained, let me let me get back to this so you'll see. So let's uh, this time let's write the scale. 
one, two, three, flight four, five, six, major seven, root node two, flight three, four, five, six, major seven, root node. And that's basically like, uh, you know, uh, minor major seven, melodic minor, shape of, e, shape of E minor. Now we know we, we know this from when we studied the, the major modes, that chord number five in the major modes is basically tension that resolves into chord number one. In other words, say if we had, um, if G major was chord number one, D7 would be tension for it. Okay. And we also learned that the equivalent would work uh, chord number five into chord number six. So this, in this case, would be D7 into E minor in terms of resolution. So here is your tension. Here is your resolution. Now, the same applies here. But when we studied the, uh, the major modes, we, we looked at them as two different things. So like chord number one is Ionian and, uh, you know, chord number five in Mixolydian and all the, all the studies that come with that. In the case of this scale, it's interesting that as you play the scale, both the tension, because of the major seven, obviously, both the tension and the resolution are in the scale. You can play with the idea of bouncing in between tension and resolution. Because of that dominant seven I just described to you, let me, let me point it out. So here I have my minor major seven. That's the chord. Let's, let's think of it as a chord, okay? Although I'm spelling it, think of it as two octaves. But at the same time, here is my dominant seven. And that's because of the major seven, which is here. Because if you think Dorian, which is basically the closest thing to melodic minor, right? Dorian doesn't have that. The D here is minor. So the resolution, the tension resolution game is not really applying. Uh, sometimes people, when they talk about melodic minor, they think of a, a major scale but with a flat three. And, and that's true, basically. So it's an Ionian scale where you're kind of substituting the third with a flat three and now you get melodic minor. But I find it a bit uncomfortable thinking in those terms because, you know, Ionian is a major scale, goes with major chords, while melodic minor is a minor scale and goes with minor chords. So I tend to prefer to think of it as a Dorian, which is because also Dorian is a minor, as a Dorian with a major seven, because they're both minor scales, and the, the only difference is, you know, is the major seven. But in Dorian, as I just demonstrated to you, uh, because of the flat seven, uh, the fifth degree, the fifth note, is actually a minor. While in the case of melodic minor, now I can create, even with the scale, even if I'm playing, like, you know, not back in track or something. <laughs> When I did that, that's that, that's your D7 that we discussed until now, and it's in the scale. sense I'm, I'm pretty sure you could hear the kind of tension resolution because when you heard it it's because i was going i was in my head i was thinking okay d7 and actually g minor but just the triad so this right because the moment you have just the triad you don't have that kind of distance of the major seven i was only using the major seven when i wanted to create the tension the five to one kind of feel Thank you. 
I hope it makes sense that, that uh, you know, it, it, as I said, it's an interesting thing. So now the, the, the backing track becomes a, a template where uh, you can try all these things. And that's why, that's why when I wrote the, the chart, you have, I wrote it that you have all this written on top, just a, a, a reminder until you kind of start remembering it. And as you notice, the alpha diminished arpeggio is always like a semitone below. So for C minor major 7, okay, that's B. For F minor major 7, it's E, half diminished. And of course, the, the dominant 7 that you can, arpeggio that you can superimpose on this is a fifth away. So for C is G, for F is C, etc. Um, my suggestion is that before you tackle the backing track, maybe you just work on one chord only. Say, you know, start from G minor and you just improvise on it over it like the way I did um, try and use just arpeggios first and not the scale so see what you can do just using the arpeggios to do basic minor major 7 arpeggio the dominant so in this case D7 arpeggio and F sharp half diminished and just just play try and formulate little little phrases out of it um, and then slowly when you feel comfortable, start moving towards the, the one in interval of fourths. Once you can tackle the backing track in interval of fourths, you know melodic manner. And it's the first degree. And beyond a basic approach, like, you know, because this harmony and theory is adding uh, very interesting elements uh, that can be used. Um, of course, I'm assuming that before doing that, you started this, because it contains basically like here, exercise one is minor major seven, arpeggios, um, just one octave. Uh, exercise two is the same exercise, but this time uh, the octave is reversed. So you're basically descending on the arpeggio. And exercise three, you're alternating in the arpeggio. Exercise four is applied to the cage system. And you are ascending and descending in the same shape before moving to the next one, while exercise five You are ascending, say, with a G minor major 7, but now you're descending in C minor major 7, etc., etc. This is probably the, the last one. Exercise 5 is probably the most difficult of them all. No. But once again, these are not easy things, but if you can do this stuff even slowly, when you play, actually playing, it's easier than this kind of exercise. So this is kind of testing you in a way. Um, I think that's it. Uh, I hope uh, I hope you enjoy the lesson. Uh, I hope you enjoy the, the content of it. If anything, I hope uh, it's inspiring for you to you know again to play different sounds. Minor major seven is a, is an interesting sound, and um, this is going to be the last lesson with regards to arpeggios for uh, for minor major seven. The next lesson is going to be about chord voicings for minor major seven, and then uh, we can move on to 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 something else. In the meantime, uh, again, thank you for the people supporting this project on Pride Run. Uh, soon all the PDFs, especially from the older lessons, are going to start, the, um, will be available for sale, probably from Patreon. At the moment, they're on sale on my website, but it's uh, rather complicated to keep up with that. So I'm going to move things to Patreon for that too. And um, yeah. I think that's it. Oh, yeah. Did you, you know, thank you to the people on YouTube uh, who are subscribing to the channel. If you haven't done so, consider doing it. Uh, it makes me look good. Okay. Thank you so much. Cheers. Bye.